This module will cover dismantling, assembly, and pressure testing of heat exchangers. First, let's look at the types of heat exchangers and show the main parts of an exchanger. The heat exchanger is an important part of petroleum refining equipment. It provides a way to move heat from one stream to another without mixing the two materials. The same principle of heat exchange is used in many everyday experiences. If you have a beverage in a can and it's too warm to drink, you simply place the warm beverage in ice and wait for the heat to exchange from the can to the ice. Soon you can remove the beverage can and enjoy a cool drink because heat has been transferred from the beverage to the ice. The beverage temperature now is about the same as the temperature of the ice. The same principle of heat transfer is used in petroleum refining heat exchangers. That is, the heat will move from a hot material to a cooler material, and the temperature of the two materials will tend to equalize. The three most common types of heat exchangers are fixed tube sheet, pull-through types, such as this bundle with a floating head bolted to the tube sheet that can be pulled through the shell. A pull-through bundle may also be one with U-tubes. And the third type is a non-pull-through. It has a split backing ring to hold the floating head on the tube sheet. In this type, the floating head cover must be removed before the bundle can be pulled. Although exchangers are constructed in a variety of types and sizes, the basic job performed by each is the same. This module is not designed to teach you the operation of an exchanger, since that is not your primary concern at this time. The module is designed to teach you how to dismantle, assemble, and pressure test an exchanger. To do that, you need to become acquainted with the names for each part of an exchanger. We will start getting acquainted with an exchanger by identifying the parts we can see on the outside of an assembled exchanger unit. The main cylindrical section is called the shell. It has at least two pipe nozzles on it for shell side flow into and out of the exchanger. The shell is designed for a specific pressure and must be tested upon reassembling the exchanger. The design conditions are indicated on the nameplate. This rounded end of the exchanger is called the shell cover. It is attached to the shell by bolts through a flange. The shell cover is sealed to the shell with a gasket between the flange faces. Attached to the other end of the shell is the channel head, sometimes referred to as channel box. The channel head on a multi-pass exchanger has at least two nozzles. One is an inlet, the other an outlet nozzle. The end of the channel head is kept with a channel cover. It is used like a large pipe blank bolted to the channel head with a gasket between the flange faces. There are small size pipe outlets on some of the nozzles. These are used for instruments and for bleeder valves. As you will see later, these small connections are also used for pressure testing. We will open the exchanger and identify some of the internal parts. We will begin by removing the channel cover. Inside the channel head, there are partitions. They are dividing walls that guide the liquid flow through certain areas. Note that the gasket surfaces on the channel cover match the shape of the partitions. And when the channel cover is installed, the partitions are sealed against the cover. Look again at the main parts associated with the channel head. This is the channel head with nozzles, and the channel head bolts onto the exchanger shell. Inside the channel head are the partitions that direct the flow to different areas, and the channel cover that closes the ends of the channel head and partitions. When the channel head is removed from the shell, the stationary tube sheet is exposed. 
The tube sheet is a thick sheet of metal with the ends of a number of pipes or tubes fastened into it. Tube sheets vary in thickness and the number of tubes in them. This shell cover has been removed from the exchanger shell end opposite the channel head. We will identify the parts inside the shell cover. This is a non-pull-through type bundle that has a split backing ring. Removing the shell cover exposes another cover inside. This is called the floating head cover. It is not fastened to the shell, but to the tube sheet. With the floating head backing device, this is a split ring which fits around the tube sheet and clamps the floating head cover to the tube sheet. This tube sheet is not fastened or anchored to the shell. It is similar to the stationary sheet, except the outside diameter is smaller than the shell inside diameter. The other end of the tubes are fastened to this sheet. In review, then, the parts of an exchanger on the end opposite the channel head are, number one, the split backing ring, number two, the floating tube sheet, number three, the floating head cover, and number four, the shell cover. The final part of the exchanger is the tube bundle. In our example, the tubes are anchored in the stationary tube sheet on one end and the floating tube sheet on the opposite end. In review, then, this piece of equipment is called an exchanger. It consists of the following major parts. The shell, the shell cover, the channel head, the channel head cover, instrument connections and bleeder valves on a nozzle, channel head partitions, stationary tube sheet, the floating head cover, the floating head backing device, sometimes called a split ring, the floating tube sheet, and the tube bundle. Open your workbooks to exercise one and follow the directions there to reinforce what you have heard thus far.